Already gone. Maybe we don't have surgery. Yeah. Uh, the strip there is basically from here to okay. here. Okay. And even, this sound may sound crazy, but even women have to shake it. Yeah. I like the picture. Okay, the little four-year-old there, that's my granddaughter Ellie. But I'm allergic to And the little guy. I'm allergic to those um, things. He's, uh, oh, he'd be three, five days old today. Uh, but that's uh, Jack Council. Okay. You're leaving? They named him after my father, but I told him about the thing. They do a model, they which is kind of cool. cool. They've got to go get the uh, pediatric. He was 8'5". Oh yeah, he's the, he's the biggest council baby in the four generations. Yeah, he's a big boy. And I got another one coming in a week or two. It'll be, uh, well, I got two step grandkids, too. They're in their 20s. Yeah, I don't But their pictures are on the wall like everybody else's, you know, so. Including them, I got eight. Sorry. Uh, when, the, when the next one's born, eight. Yeah. So I've been walking on air this week, you know. So. I can't describe to you how wonderful that blessing is. It is, uh, and if I had a, I mean, if I had a worst enemy, I don't, but I, I, would, I would even wish it on my worst enemy that they'd be blessed with not only kids, but men, it's, uh, hallelujah. And those of you that haven't been blessed, that's why the church has families, because you watch, if we're really doing the will of God, God's going to send us kids that don't have parents, that don't have uncles and aunts, that are abandoned, and they need you, okay? They need you. I have uh, one of my best friends in ministry. He was actually my associate pastor at Greeley in, in, for two years. His name is Ken Bombay. And Ken and Joan, Ken and Joan have been married for 55 years. They never had any kids. And I remember being in his office when he pastored a church in Montreal. And behind his office was a, behind his desk was a cork board with about 350 pictures of kids. My picture was up on that board. He didn't even have to tell me who what it was. I know Ken well enough that he told me. He keeps these, they're all preacher's kids. And he had a super burden for preacher's kids and he would pray for them all the time, all the time. And there are, oh, yeah, I probably couldn't exaggerate. At, at one time, maybe 15, 20 years ago, you could say there were hundreds of pa pastors and their wives in the Pentecostal movement that they considered Ken like a second dad, like I do. Okay, I still get together with them, and you know when I, you know when I need prayer and I need somebody to slap me up the side of the head and tell me, you know, what I really need to be doing. He's there for me, you know. And uh, just because you haven't had grandkids or anything like that, don't let that stop you from God ministering through you or to you. Okay. I don't know why I shared that with you, but that, that's okay, okay? Maybe it's because of the title. Let's see if I can bring it up here. Okay, well, I can't if Denise is in front of me, but okay. There we go. Let's pray, okay? Let's pray. Father, I'm not talking about you speaking. You've got to speak. I'm not going to say for the congregation. I'm going to say for me, God. i got no time to hear John Council. I could care less what John Council is about. I need to hear from you. But Lord, like so many of your servants, I know sometimes, God, that you could really speak through John Council. Like you could speak through everybody in this room here, God. But Lord, we want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. Please make this come alive. Please, God. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. God is speaking. Um, that's not the title in my notes, okay? Um, it's got a second part. I didn't want to put in a bulletin because I didn't want to intimidate anybody and I didn't want anybody to roll their eyes. Oh, yeah, I see where you're coming from. And I didn't want to sound like a lecture. You know, if I, and this just means my opinion. If I'm talking and I give direction, 
and you don't feel loved by God, I've done something wrong. The love of God has got to saturate everything that we share with people. The love of God, listen, the love of God, I'm talking to the regulars on Thursday night to them, okay? And those of us that are committed to, to reaching people for Jesus and not just, you know, doing the church thing here, okay? The love of God is the greatest weapon we have. Have you got that? Not your eloquence, not your words. And, and most of the time that love is displayed just by your ears. Listen, okay? That's the greatest weapon we have. So that's my heart when I tell you the second part of it. God's speaking. Are you listening? Are you listening? All right, sometimes we hear things, but are you listening? Okay? I don't know about you. My wife, my wife is like a, like a, I keep getting Facebook, uh, FaceTime messages from her. She's in California with my other daughter-in-law who has not given birth yet. Okay? And she's, you know, helping her get ready and everything. And uh, Heather is like, when she goes on vacation, she is, she, you can't tie her down. She, I'll bet she's got their whole house reorganized and cleaned, and she's doing gardening and planting trees, and I know it's California, so they do that in January. And, and like, she just go, 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 go. When she hits the bed at night, some of you are like this, I don't know what, when you hit your, when your head hits the bed at night, you're up cold in like 30 seconds. Like, Heather's up cold in 10 minutes. Like, I snore, I shake the house, okay? My granddaughter, Violet, her room is right below our room. They live with us, okay? She can hear me through the floor at night, okay? That's how loud I snore, okay? Doesn't wake Heather because she is out cold, okay? I'm not like that. I, I don't know why, probably because I'm a nighttime person. My head hits the pillow. I got 65 things going on. Man. And, and, and I have to bring my mind at peace. So I have these crazy fantasies, okay? Don't worry, I won't embarrass you. Okay, I have these crazy fans. I, I, I'm a pitcher in the major leagues, okay? And I'm either pitching for the Dodgers or the Tigers, okay? In all sorts of scenarios, okay? I know that's childish. I know, I don't care. Um, another one is I have superpowers, okay? I have superpowers. I'm invisible and I can fly and I can take out all the bad people in the world. Oh, well, that's a good one. <laughs> you know how you watch TV, you see so much evil, you know? And you hey, your righteous spirit, you know? Like a lot when he was in, in, in uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, the Bible says his righteous soul was vexed. He was ticked off at all the evil. I get ticked off. And Jesus, the Bible says in Proverbs, in various places, the fear of God is to hate evil. I hate evil. So I'm not going to fantasize of being the, the, the judgment angel of God. You know, he'd have to okay, of course. Okay, so it's safe. Okay. Um, another one I do, sometimes I go back in time and I talk to my dad. Okay? Well, it's kind of Ouija board stuff. No, it isn't. That's just a neat fan imagine, okay? And usually he's pastoring in Montreal, and right next to the Montreal Forum, there was a restaurant there called The Texan. And he used to like taking people for coffee. And I get this fantasy, I'm calling it up. I said, Jack, um, and I tell him some secrets that only I would know. Um, I have some information I need to share with you. Of course, he wouldn't recognize me looking like this, okay? And, and I, okay? Why are you telling us this, John? Because um, here's my number one fantasy. Okay? Some of you I've shared this with. If I could have any wish, what would I want? Okay? I want six hours alone with Jesus, a tripod, and a video camera that's well charged. Okay? And I got a week to prep for it and take notes because I got questions. I got, and I want straight answers. Now, I go through the scenarios of what that would be like. Chances are, a lot of things that he told me, I'd be scared spitless or I'd want to just die. Okay? Because he is not going to spare anything if he talks to me. But I get, I get six hours, okay? Okay? I mean, if you, or maybe it's just me. I've been doing this a long time. Man, I'd like to hear the voice of God. I would like to know what he thinks specifically. Before I screw up. Before I make a wrong choice. Okay? I have been wrong so many times that... Uh, probably the greatest cry of my heart, God, i got to hear you. Please. Please. I'm not smart. Maybe you are smart enough to run your life. I'm not. Okay? I don't. I can't. God, I need you. I need to hear from you. And he's speaking all the time. Does God ever seem distant when you're waiting for an answer, trying to hear his voice? Of course he does. And we have to remind ourselves, He will never leave us or forsake us. You know, sometimes He even ticks me off remembering that. I know you will never leave me or forsake me. Well, yeah, you're never going to leave me. I'm still walking through the valley, you know, like valley, shadow, death, and 
<coughs> we go through times where we, well, maybe I'm the only one. You know what? I preach myself. If you get anything out of this, good, okay? I, I need to share some of this stuff with you, okay? Because maybe it's just my journey, part of my journey. Um, now, I got, sometimes you've got to take your head and you've got to screw it a little tighter into your body so you're thinking properly, okay? Like, <clears throat> you look at, when Paul writes the church in Ephesus, in Ephesus 6, and he talks about spiritual warfare, helmet of the truth, breastplate of salvation, you know, sword of the spirit. He goes through all that, and then he says this, there's a truth here that you've missed. He says, with this in mind, now you think, well, you know, now that I've told you this, there's more to it than that. With this in mind, what does he say with this in mind? Keep on praying for all the saints. When he says, with this in mind, you know what he's saying? All that spiritual battle's going on in your head. All these spiritual battles and your determination to, to, to put on what God has given you, that's going on in your head. It's all in your mind. That's where the battle's taking place all the time. Where does God speak? Well, he speaks to your mind, but man, and there's, there's been a ton of, uh, of uh, medical research that's done lately that not all the thinking and personality and everything is in your brain. It's in your heart as well, okay? And we use like very, like almost Shakespearean poetic, well, I accepted Christ into my heart, okay? And, and biology is learning there's a lot more to that than just I accepted Jesus in my brain. And you guys know I gave my heart to Jesus, so how does God speak? Well, he speaks through his word, okay? And I'm going to flog that to death. But even if he's speaking through his word, when you really feel God, those of us that kind of think we've heard from God. You, you, you even use this terminology, I feel it in my gut. It's a gut, gut, gut feeling. It's in my heart. You're being very accurate. Because there's times, and I could be wrong, but I'm sharing with you, where I felt, man, that's God. i got to do that. And I'm not even comfortable with it, but I can't escape it because it's there. And he wouldn't have to give me an audible voice because it's so real in my heart. I, I just, I can't go any other way. Okay? Yeah, I made some mistakes, but... Man, there's been some crazy decisions where I look back and Heather and I say, man, was that ever God? Was that ever God? What was the test? Not only his word, not only serves it, but it just, it's, it's, it's in there. It's in my heart. He's listening. He's listening. Um, he's speaking all the time. I'm not always listening. Okay? We're not always listening. He's always speaking. Now, he's always speaking through his word. Always. Always. Good way to cancel the lies of the devil. Good way to cancel depression. Good way to cancel confusion. Pick it up. Most of the time, when you read it, it's probably not going to speak specifically to the knee jerk. Now, it will on occasion. Sometimes it has so amazingly, I'm almost falling off the chair. I wish that would happen a lot, but it doesn't happen enough. But it happens enough for me to know that's very, very possible. But the very act of cracking it open sends a signal. I don't belong to you. I don't belong to me. I belong to him. Okay? Even the act you're going to find. Okay, if I was sitting, listening to this message right now, there'd be a part of me saying, yeah, yeah, I know this is a word. You know. I know the answer. I don't like it. I want another answer. <laughs> We're like that. We're born con artists. Okay? The heart is just deceitfully wicked. It's desperately wicked. Depends on the translation, okay? That and that's not that's talking about people that follow Christ too, okay? And and your you, your your yourself will con you. Lots of times you'll read something in a word and right away, well, that was good for them. Well, my situation is different, okay? There is nothing. You need to know this, okay? You think you're not creative. You think you're just well. I'm just a you know a, a regular person. There is nothing more creative than somebody who's justifying their own sin. Oh my goodness, you can get creative. You will always find that turn the ringers off, okay? Remind me, you can turn the ringer on. Turn the ringer off right now, okay? We don't want you embarrassed. Um, you will always find an excuse to not be obedient. Always. In fact, there'll be dozens of them sometimes. Okay? What's going to keep me? Okay? And i got to share with you. It, it's not my ability to do this. What's going to keep me? Me looking at this and knowing that John 1 says in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. 
It's almost like I'm holding God in my hand. And the word was with God. And I hold that, and I'm not talking superstition now. Because there's some people, stupid. I, I've heard of Christians that take their Bible and put it under their pillow, you know, to, to, you know, to be able, well, that's stupid. That's superstitious, okay? <laughs> Read the thing. <laughs> Understand the thing. <laughs> let it, let it read you, okay? Let it read you. Here's another one. And, and I'm learning how to just come under its authority. Come under its authority, okay? We want to serve Christ our way, okay? And when you want to serve, I'm talking to Christians now, not talking to people that we're ministering to. I'm talking to you disciples of Christ. You've made the decision. I'm going to serve God, and I'm going to bring as many people to heaven as I can. I've got to drag them kicking and screaming, okay? That's who I'm talking to right now, okay? We want to serve God our way, okay? And when you want to serve God your way, that's at the core of most failed relationships, including marriages. That's at the core of failed church experiences. I'm never going back there again, okay? That's at the core of blessing that was just about to be bestowed on you, but impatience got in the way, okay? So we want to serve God our way. Oh, I must be such a loser. Don't be, that's a lie of the devil too. That's coming from somebody who hasn't grasped how crazy Jesus is about you. Jesus believes more in you guys than you do in yourself. Okay? And he's trying to impress his thoughts on us. And he's trying to impress his character on us. He's speaking all the time. Okay? God, help me trust you. God, please. You know why? And we're flogging it and you hear it all the time in this church, but it's not a bad thing to be reminded. The devil's lies are so believable. Okay? Outside of Christ, we're easy to fool. Look at the way people vote in this country. I mean, that is a testimony to how easy people are to fool. Look at the stuff that, I mean, you look at the stuff that's the highest rated stuff on TV. You've got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. Okay? Matthew 4 and 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I hope there are times in your life when you haven't, when you go through a period of time, a day, a two, three, whatever, where you haven't read the word and you start feeling like you're starving. You start feeling like antsy. You start feeling like stressed. I hope that happens to you. That's a good thing. Man, I gotta get in the word. If I don't get in the word, I'm gonna I'm gonna explode. Okay? I hope that happens to you. Isn't that a great slide? I love that slide right there, okay? The Greek word, when Jesus says man will not live, okay? It means it, more, it means more like alive. It's the Greek word zao. Okay, it means zest, zing, spark of life. Okay, I, you're not gonna you're not gonna have spark of life. There's gonna be no zing. It's gonna be same old, same old. Okay, if if he's not he's speaking all the time, but it, if you're not if your direction is not being changed by him, if your direction is not being reinforced by him. It doesn't come from bread. Now dig a little deeper on that. Hey, you got any bread? Dough? Coin? Cash? Okay? He's not just saying man will not live by bread alone. He's saying man's not going to live by the stuff that he thinks he needs. Everybody wants more cash. Everybody thinks they're going to do better if they have more cash. Okay? Christians believe that! I try to hide it. You know, the devil sees right through it and he tempts you anyway and God knows you're struggling with it. Okay? Every word, every word, he says, every word, the whole Bible, not just the parts we like. I, uh, um, in the bulletin, and this is the, it's a Bible reading system. It's simple as anything. There's all kinds of systems, okay? You do column one, then you do column two. Have a system. Make sure you're reading the whole Bible. Because if you start in Genesis, by the time you get to Leviticus, you're going to want to be a Buddhist, okay? It's boring as hell, okay? It's, I'm looking, I, I, Jesus and I have a wonderful relationship, it's boring. So, I came up with, okay, somebody that's never read the Bible, read the Bible through cover to cover. Probably a good system. There's other systems that are better, but I thought I'd want to give this to you. You should fit in your Bible, you know? Like, 
And, and, and I made the point, don't just read the parts you like. I have a checklist in the back of my Bible. I've shared this with some of you, and, and I was gonna, I couldn't find the checklist to photocopy it. If you push me hard enough this week, I could probably do it. Every chapter in the Bible, I took it off. And if I had my way, all I would read is Psalms. Because yeah. Psalms is like dessert. Psalms like chocolate sundae. Psalms like banana splits. Psalms like a, you know, a fistful of um, a Lindor chocolates, okay? But you can't live on that alone. And so what I do is typically when I'm reading, I'll get a little bit of the Old Testament, get a little of the New Testament, I try to be led by the Holy Spirit, I'll always end it on a song. Now that's just me, that you don't have to do that. But it's like, yeah, she you read Jeremiah and like uh, even parts of the song where you know uh, David's you know asking God to tear his enemies' heads off and everything. I'm going, whoa, that's not very Christ-like, you know, like uh, and crazy stuff. But when I go back to uh, the Psalms, is like dessert. It's like I got you, buddy. It's good, okay. Now what's going on there? I got a system. I got I got an interaction with God. I, I want to be led, and I never crack it open without God. You got to help me with this. Okay? I've been at this for, well, I've been born again now for forever, okay? Yeah, you know, longer than almost everybody in the room, okay? I haven't got it together yet. So somebody hasn't got it together yet. still asking God, God, you got to show me, you got to show me. What makes you think you're going to get more revelation than anybody? That's the way this works. We're asking Him to help us all the time, okay? You know who's not going to get help from the Lord? Somebody who thinks He has it together. Because Jesus said, Blessed are they who are hunger, that hunger for righteousness. They will be filled. If you're not hungry, he's got nothing for you. So the trick is stay hungry, okay? Not just the parts you like. You know, here's some parts you like. No good thing will he withhold to those who walk us upright. Ooh, like that, eh? Here's another one. Delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. That's Psalm 37, 4. Ooh, we like that one. Here's a few more. I don't have references, Ken, sorry, but that I've lived with these all my life. Ask anything in my name and you shall receive it. Oh, like that too. I will never leave you to, oh, they're all true. Everyone is all true. These ones are also true. In this world you will have trouble. All men will hate you because of me. That wasn't Judas that said that. Everybody hates Judas. No, no, Jesus said that. Broad is the road that leads to destruction. Many are on it. Narrow is the road to salvation if you find it. Hello. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Anyone who does not do that is not worthy of me. It's so ironic. I don't know if I told you guys this. I, I think I've shared this story with you. Heather and I ran a Christian t-shirt company in the, in the um, uh, mid-80s. Sold a lot of Christian t-shirts. And there was one, one of the popular sellers. It had the word deny. As big as we could get it printed. Fill up the whole shirt. Deny. And then across in red, thyself, with Mark 8, 34. That's all it said. Deny thyself. And we wholesaled them to youth groups and to conventions and to Christian bookstores and everything. So I didn't always have control over where I sold them. But it always struck me funny. I would see these people who are like, oh, 200 pounds overweight wearing this shirt. You know? And I'm going... I don't know, what's wrong with this picture? You know, I don't mean to make a, a judgment call there. You know, but uh, the word can be something that we like, that we don't live. The word can be something that, yeah, I adhere to it. I'm a, you know, how much is it affecting me? Okay? How much is it influencing my behavior? Okay? Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is living. If it's in your life, it's alive. Ken and Carol just got a new puppy. What's a cross? Border Collie what? Border Collie, uh, Labrador. Okay, it's part Border, border Collie and Lab, okay? Border. border Collies are the smartest dog you could get. And you should have sat in on some of the conversations. I said, Ken, don't do this. Please don't do this, okay? Border Collies are the smartest breed you could get. You live in an apartment, that dog's going to drive you nuts, okay? They are not like any other dog. I've had a lot of experience with Border Collies, okay? And he's saying, okay, okay, okay. And, and whether he's right or wrong, that's not the point I'm making. You go into that house, you know something's alive in there. <laughs> right away. Right away. Okay. Now the word of God is living. If it's living in your life, when people talk to you, 
Whoa, there's something there. I want the Word of God living in me. I want people to say, what is it with you? I mean, for good reason. You know, like, maybe because I'm frothing at the mouth and I'm, you know, seeing demons all over the place. <laughs> okay? It's alive. That Man, there's, there's more there than we got to talk about right now. The Word of God is living and sharper than any other two-edged sword. And piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. I think, you know, the guy who wrote that was trying to communicate the best that he could of how sharp it is. And I think we've got a better example today, okay? And I think it's a lightsaber. Oh, John, you're just being cute. No, I'm not. He said, we're the light of the world. He said he's come to pierce the darkness. What's a laser? It's condensed light. He said the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. I guarantee you if a lightsaber is real, it would be sharper than any two-edged sword. I know because I saw it on Star Wars. Okay? There's something there. It cuts to the dividing mirror. And I know for a fact that they're even using lasers on... The, that's a major tool in surgery now. Because it cuts way finer than a two-edged sword or a scalpel. Well, that's your image you need to know about the Word of God, how powerful it is. There's nothing that can stand in its way. Nothing. It is powerful. Okay? It reads you. Thy Word is a lamp under my feet. Okay, it's got light. There you go. Okay? So it's real? Yep. Today, today, Rich, <laughs> if you hear his voice, that's a big if, you know, I'll give you that, but today... If you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. I've done that. I know what that feels like. I've paid the price for it. I love you guys. If you hear his voice, don't get a hard Man, I pray, God, don't let me have a hard heart. Don't let me get stiff-necked. God, i got to hear you. Keep me flexible, God. Here's a, a recipe, a recipe for a hard heart, okay? Here's a recipe for a hard heart. You got it? Here it comes. Listen to what the Word says, and that's all. Don't do what it says. Just listen. That's a recipe for a hard heart. Because if all you're doing is listening and not doing anything about it, your heart, you don't even know it's getting harder and harder and harder for the truth to pierce, to get to where it needs to get to in our beings, okay? Jesus said, people who do that kind of thing, he said they deceive themselves. They think they're saved. I don't know whether they are or not. That's just opinion, not a judgment call. I could really be wrong on that. I don't know. Jesus said this when he's correcting the Sadducees in Matthew 22 and 29. You are in error because you do not understand the scriptures or the power of God. And he put the responsibility on them. Okay? You know, it would be fair for him to say that to me. John, you're out to lunch because you don't understand. Now, I know the scriptures, but I probably was listening to them and not letting them change my behavior. Because he links it up with the power of God. If your behavior is changing because of the Word of God, you are un that is the power of God being unleashed in your life. Okay? And if we're not like that, we make mistakes. And they're not only making mistakes, they're living in error. James says, okay, people who do that kind of thing deceive themselves. Okay? Well, of course. That's where confusion starts. Confusion starts with neglecting the Word. I'm trying to ratchet up the value here, guys. I'm going to have to watch less YouTube. Okay? I'm going to have to, you know, i got to make time for this. Do you think things in my life are going to die on their own? <laughs> oh, the devil's going to make sure. No way. And it will be important things that step in there. Things have got to get done. Okay? Where the choice is, it's difficult, you know? Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed by lack of knowledge. What does that mean? You're not smart enough? 
No, it's, you let the wisdom of the ages kind of slide off. Or, yeah, I know about that. Yeah, whatever, you know. Hebrews 2.1, pay more attention to what you already know. Now, I'm paraphrasing that, but if you look it up, that's what it says, okay, in the Word. Pay more attention to what you've already learned. It's not like, oh, I need a new revelation. He's already taught you enough, boy, to, to you can turn the world inside out with what you already know. Okay? I love this one. Call to me, and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. You thought you knew it all, did you? <laughs> When you read the Word, you find out things. When you read the Word, when you, when you let it saturate you, you find out things. Okay, You find out about yourself. There's some great psychologist, B.F. Skinner, or like whatever, one of those guys, know thyself. Oh, doesn't that sound deep? You know, it's not a bad line. That's a good thing to know yourself. But I'm telling you right now, you're going to know yourself way more by reading the Word than staring at your navel or the mirror all day, okay? You will find out more about yourself by reading the Word than anything else, okay? You will find out about God. Everybody's got their opinions on God, okay? I want to back up just for a second. Back to yourself. You're going to find out that you're basically evil. You're going to find out that you're born in sin. You're going to bend towards evil. You're going to find out, and it may swell your head, because this could be a problem too, but you know, that's why you're in a church, you've got people to help you. You're going to find out you're awesomely powerful when fully surrendered by God, to God. Awesomely powerful. But you know, if you don't plug the drill in, it's pretty useless. You ever try to use a power drill when it's not plugged in? You look like an idiot. <laughs> oh, you got to plug it in! Ah, you know. <laughs> plugged in is plugged into the Word. John 15, 7. If you abide in me, say plugged in, okay? If you abide in me, and my words, there's the word again, abide in you. Not just reading it, but my words abide in you. The psalmist says, I love your word, and on my word I meditate on it day and night, okay? If my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Holy smoke! Hey, how come God doesn't do that? Well, I guess your words aren't abiding in it. His words are not abiding in you, Okay? You find that out about yourself when you read the Word. You find out about God. You find out that God is the most authoritative, trustworthy, informative source anywhere. Right there. Hebrews 4.13 There's no creature hidden from His sight. Oh, I sight of that one. No, never. But all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of Him who have, of Him whom we have to do. Okay? You find out what he thinks is sin. You find out how patient he is. You find out how merciful he is. He's not fair, though. You find out he's not fair at all. And I've learned that, you know, he should have killed me at least two, three hundred times. There's no way he's fair. He doesn't hold our sin against us. Unbelievable. I, I, it just blows me away how, how unfair he is. Ridiculously unfair. In our favor. You find out what God expects. There's no confusion when you read the word. Okay? It's pretty straight. You may have some issues going, oh, I don't know about that. Or you make some excuse. Or your creativity on how to justify your sin is going to go into overdrive. Okay? But there's no confusion with what he expects. And with so much mercy and power, the least he expects of us is to stay plugged in to here. Okay? Rich man in hell. Remember that story? Jesus talks to him. Crazy story. He says, send Lazarus to, you know, cool my tongue from the fire. And you know what Jesus says? He says, no. They have the Bible. They have all they need. That's what he meant. But he said, they have the law and the prophets. They have the Bible. Everything I need. Everything I need. Most people haven't discovered how powerful this is. So they don't, that kind of, you know, they don't really understand that. You find out how relationships work. Oh my goodness, some of us could help, need help there. Okay? And what to do to make them work. And how to know purity and value in others. Okay? You find that out from the Bible. You learn how to discern character from the Bible. Somebody that, whoa, I don't know if I want to be around them. And other people, man, I can't. I, man. 
Being bad is really, really hard to hide. You know what? Being good is really hard to hide, too. And our senses and our discernment gets ratcheted up the more that word is living in us, okay? You know the old line, everybody uses it when they want to make an excuse, you know, to not listen to what your opinion is. Oh, don't judge, don't judge! <coughs> oh, shut up. You know, you know that in most situations that doesn't apply at all. Jesus himself said, exercise right judgments. Don't judge by mere appearance. Okay? And when it says, there's two different words for discernment and making decisions, which we do all the time. That's a form of judgment. The word is mouth. M-U-W-T-H. I don't know how they pronounce it, but it's mouth. But the word when Jesus says, do not judge, is another Greek word. It means credo. You know what it means? It means you can't condemn anybody to hell. You can't write anybody off. So don't judge somebody as a write-off. That's what it means. As far as making discerning decisions, man, you better be doing that. And they better be spirit-governed, or you're going to make a mess of your life. Okay? Quit being so, I'm going to judge. Man. How are you going to do that without the word? Well, <laughs> that's why we're here. When you read the Bible, it lets you know about the future. A lot of us that know the word, we see how messed up the world is. We know what's coming, don't we? Don't we? We can see it. There's no confusion. Oh, what are they going to think of next? Oh, look. no way. We know what the word says. What goes around comes around. Nothing escapes God's attention. What you read, be so. Hmm. You learn what real love is. How many lives have been shipwrecked because they don't know what real love is? And they gave up too easy or they made a wrong decision. The Word will show you what real love is. The Word, you'll find out the, th the thrill it is to live totally dependent on Christ. You can't learn that anywhere else in the Word. I can't make that as real to you as the Word can. Supernatural sustenance. We did a whole series of messages on Elijah. Crazy. The guy's out in the wilderness for four years. And what bird is bringing him food every day? The, word, the bird that we get the word ravenous from. Ravens are the most selfish, self-serving. They don't share with nothing. They fight each other for food. And God says, that's the bird I want to bring food to Elijah every day. Crazy. Crazy. You learn that God is someone who makes a lot of great promises. He makes a lot of great promises. And he's never broken any of them. Ever. Ever. Look at the screen. Sing this. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Sing it again. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you. You, but I think a lot of people saying that like they really believed it, like they meant it from their heart. So I don't want you to be shocked when I put up a slide here that's probably the most common slide I've put up on all my messages. You see this slide a lot. We've just sung about, oh, how he loves you, oh, how he loves me. So what? Well, sing this. Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Speak, and I'll be quick to answer thee. Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Speak, and I will answer. Lord, send me. Please 
it again. Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Speak, and I'll be quick to answer thee. Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Speak, and I will answer, Lord, send me. We're going to sing that two more times. Okay? Whether you know it or not, I want... I'm giving you the opportunity this afternoon to sing this to Jesus. If you know the song, you can sing it with your eyes closed. If you don't, you can kind of, you know when you sing a real good worship song and you want to worship God, close your eyes, but you don't know the words quite, you keep opening up your eyes to get over. I do that all the time, okay? And you know what? While you're singing this to the Lord, you're allowed to do that. Okay? Can you imagine if all of us are singing that? <coughs> Can you imagine if we all mean it? Can you imagine what God could do? What do you mean, Lord, send me? Lord, send me to where you want me instead of where I think I need to be. I don't want to run my life, God. I want you. You've got to put me or keep me. i got to be doing. The steps of a good man, the psalmist said, are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his way. God sends them and say, there goes Clay, man. He's right exactly where I want him. There goes Steve, oh man, watch this, watch what I do through him. Why? Because he decided he wasn't just going to sit around in front of the computer, or he wasn't going to spend his nights feeding his flesh. You got it? I hope that you learn this enough so you can sing it on your own and close your eyes and, God, God, make that real in my life, please. Speak, my Lord, speak, my Lord. Speak and I'll be quick to answer thee. Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Speak and I will answer. Lord, send me. Just one more time, okay? Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. Speak and I'll be quick to answer thee. Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord, speak, and I will answer, Lord, send me. You know what I'm thinking right now? Church is almost over. It's time to go. Oh, man, I preached my sermon, prayed about it all week. Had all kinds of moving parts. It's over. Thank God I'm still alive. You know? And I'll go home. I'm going to make taco soup for me and Christy tonight because we had nachos last night. We got leftover beef with taco. It's a real good recipe. It's fantastic. Looking forward to it. We watched a James Bond movie last night too. You know, it was a lot of fun. And uh, you know, I get free time. What if God speaks to me and says, "John, I don't. I want you going." And you know what? His yoke is easy. His burden is light. He is not a cattle ranch driver. He's a shepherd. He leads the sheep. Okay? John Council's got to give the Lord more ownership. It's not my free time. It's not. And I, I'm not afraid to say that because I know how kind he is. Speak, my Lord. I just prayed, I'll be quick to answer thee. I'm not always quick to answer him, and I'm the loser when I'm not quick to answer him. I think about it. Well, how can I get my own way? How can I kind of fit this in? How can I do minimum response, maximum output? What a, what a stupid lie. You know? So God, I want to affirm that as we go back to some family members that don't know you, when we go back to situations we're not that comfortable with, we're going back to the grind of the week. You are just as much with us every second as you are right now. Lord, brand that into our beings, God. I pray, Lord, that this would be the most fearless congregation in the city, God. And they're not even afraid, God, Lord, of making a mistake in their efforts to follow you, God. And loose your blessing power upon us that we can bless and exhort one another daily like you've commanded us to do, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Now say to somebody next to you, he's finally finished. <laughs> <laughs>
wise words. You know, no guys do it, but there's Tui up there, said teacher. That was way too long. You know? I'm hoping that was done. I'm hoping that was done. all ready to go. Praise the Lord. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just let me, uh, gotta shut this down. Because I know my ride is going to be... No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 